In this video I'm going to show you how we can create a bulletproof workflow in our favorite programming language with Temporal. Pack it up, let's start! What's Temporal? Temporal is an open source runtime for managing distributed application state at scale. In other words, Temporal is a solution to create and manage complex business workflows in a distributed system. Such it is the case in a microservices architecture or a highly available monolithic application. The two main selling points of Temporal are It promises us to code smarter and faster. We can pick our favorite language between Java, Go, Python, TypeScript, PHP and many more are on the way and define the business logic in workflow and activity functions. There is virtually no learning curve because we can use the native constructs of the programming language rather than a complicated framework. The temporal runtime makes all the heavy lifting involved in executing the workflows. It receives workflow execution requests, schedules them, persists their state and communicates with all the relevant worker services. Top that with a wonderful administrative panel that gives you full visibility on workflows and their state as well as management functions such as the ability to terminate a workflow. This is massive, this is a game changer. Temporal is addressing the pain points we find when we try to implement complex workflows in a distributed system. Temporal acts as the orchestrator in the saga pattern. As developers, we are relieved from having to implement retries, timeouts and most importantly, persist state while the workflow is executing. We get this out of the box. That means that our workflows are resilient and durable. A workflow in Temporal can last hours, days or even months. The next question is, how does it work? The core concepts of Temporal are workflows and activities. The workflow represents the business process we want to model. We could have a workflow to model orders in an online shop. The activities represent the logical steps we need to perform in the workflow, such as reserving a product from the inventory or booking logistics. A workflow in Temporal is just a function written in our favorite programming language that uses the Temporal SDK to interact with the Temporal server. As we already mentioned, we can choose any language we wish. In this particular video, I'm going to stick to Java, but please continue watching the video even if you intend to use another programming language. I'm just explaining the concepts. This is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. This is an example of a basic order workflow. As you can see, it's very readable. Any programmer can figure out what's happening without too much hand-holding. We reserve products from inventory, book logistics, wait for the package to be delivered and send a notification asking a review of the product one day after the delivery has been confirmed. The workflow has a type or name and most importantly, its code must be deterministic. That means that given the same input values, the function must generate the same commands in the same sequence. All pieces of logic that are non-deterministic like those that could fail, like invoking another service or storing data on a database, must be enclosed in activities. Smaller tasks which we do not expect to fail but are still non-deterministic, such as generating a random value, are wrapped inside effects. The reason why workflows must be deterministic is that they are replayed multiple times before their completion. This is where you need to focus because this concept is not straightforward. When we request a workflow execution, the temporal server is responsible to store the necessary data and schedule its execution by putting it on a task queue. The temporal server does not actually know how to execute the workflow or what activities are part of it. These are defined in our own code base and deployed in our applications known as workers. Each worker is pulling those queues and executing the relative tasks. When a worker executes a workflow function, the execution is not done from start to end immediately. Anytime we invoke an activity or other SDK method like side effect or wait, we interact with the temporal server 
which decides whether we continue execution or we stop and give control back to the orchestrator. If the requested activity was already executed, the temporal server would fetch its result from the event log and give it back to the workflow function that can continue its execution. If the activity was never executed, the temporal server schedules the activity execution, waits for a worker to complete it, and store its result. Once this is done, the temporal server is going to schedule a replay of the workflow. The workflow is replayed and stops anytime we need to execute a new activity or we want to wait for a specific condition or amount of time. All the complexity of interactions with a temporal server or another orchestrator are abstracted by the SDK. We don't need to define APIs or event. The integration piping is all abstracted to us and we can focus on defining the business logic. Another two important features of Temporal are signals and timers. A signal is a message sent to the workflow which can be used to change its state and control its execution flow. If we look at our order workflow, we wait for the package to be delivered with just one line of code using the await command. The workflow will wait until the deliver flag is set to true. However, the question is, how will the boolean flag change its value from false to true. That's exactly a perfect use case for a signal method. We can have another microservice send the signal or even a human operator can work on the web UI. We call the set delivered method and that unblocks the workflow execution. Timers are self-explanatory. Rather than waiting for a condition, we wait for an amount of time. It could be one second, one hour, one day or even one year. Implementing the same behavior without temporal would require persistence, message brokers, it would be quite complex. Instead, we can just leverage the SDK and focus on the business logic. Getting started with temporal is really easy. If you just want to try it out, you can leverage the temporal CLI. This is an executable that combines a lightweight server with the GUI and lets you be up and running in few seconds. If you want to deploy the full infrastructure, you can reference their Docker Compose repository. In here you also find Kubernetes manifest. Finally, my favorite option is to use the Temporal Cloud Service. They take care of the Temporal infrastructure, and you can get started with coding your workflows without having to care for operations. It's pay-per-use, thus there is no upfront license to buy, which is great. As you know, I like to keep these videos up to 10 minutes, so I'm going to stop here. However, if you want a more in-depth tutorial, leave me a comment. I know that in this period I'm not creating too many videos, but I read your comments and I do my best to answer your questions. Like, subscribe and share, and now time to learn something new.